Hello friends! In part 2 today, I share with you how to attach bones to the character Jared with three different angles. Let's get started. This is the character Jared with three different angles, I shared with you in part one. This is the main three quarters corner of the character, we select the character group and right click, then select convert to bone. Start creating bones for the character, click the add bone tool, the shortcut is a and draw bones for the character. First create a main bone to lift the entire character's body. Then draw the butt bone, the abdomen bone, the chest bone with the neck I use the same bone and the head bone. To attach the biceps bone in the most accurate way, I will select the center of the biceps with the support tool. If you don't use the center selection tool, Dot you can create the center like I'm doing. Do the same with the other hand. Select the center with the supporting tool or create your own like I did. These two biceps bones don't have a bone connection yet, so I linked these two biceps bones to the character's chest bone. Next, create leg bones for the character. Select on the thigh layer, press the G key and select split to create more midpoints on the edges. 
Use the tool to get the center points and create bones right on the taken center points. The calf and foot bones. I don't need to take the center, just draw the bone divided into two parts between the calf and the foot. Do the same with the side leg. Added the bone on the thigh with the opposite bone direction and connected this bone to the body bone. Select all bones, press S key and drag the mouse to the left to turn off the bone affected area. The thigh bone will attach to this new bone. Select these two new bones and turn on IK to help us flip the bones left or right easily. I rotated this foot to align with the direction of the created bone to avoid creating new bone. This is the easiest way to do it. Next step we will bind all layers to all bones. Which layer is in the position of the bone, we will bind that layer at the position of that bone. For layers that are in the same group, I will choose that group to bind to the bone quickly. Or you can bind each layer to that bone, but that's not the best way. We continue to bind the rest. We can bind each layer or bind an entire group like this. I created one more eye bone. This bone is connected to the head bone, with two pins above to bind the iris group. These two pin bones will connect to the iris bone. We bind the iris group according to the position of the bones we created. The left pin bone is equivalent to the left iris group. The right pin bone is equivalent to the right iris group. The mask layer of the right eye we bind to the head. The whole eye expression group is also bound to the character's head. The eyebrow group also binds to the character's head. Do the same with the left eye. The nose also binds to the head bone. And the character's two ears also bind to the skull bone. For the hair group part you can bind the whole group to the skull. But in this case I wanted to make the character's hair movement better. Therefore, I will draw more bones in each of the hair tips of the character, all of which are connected to the bones of the head. I click on the head bone to select the object as the parent link. The bones of the hair tip are the child bones. After drawing, I selected all the bones, press the S key and drag left to turn off the affected area of the bones. 
Bind all the points of this shadow layer to the head bone to avoid missing points. The hair layer I also bind, selects all the points that bind to the head. Select each child bone and bind to the tips of the hair tips where the child bone is standing. I do the same with the shadow layer. Select all these bones, then click on bone constraints. Turn on bone dynamics and type in the parameters as I am doing. Or you can choose a more suitable parameter if you want. I'll try moving so you can see the results. The tips of the hair were swaying with the character's movements. Basically we have completed the skeleton of the character. I will rotate the character's bones to check for any mistakes. The character's hand joint when rotating was cut out by the forearm. So I'm going to move the collar up a little bit higher. So that when rotating the hand, it will not be cut out like just now. I rotate my hand once more so you can see the result. The bug was fixed earlier, it looks better now. As for this right hand, when I rotate it you see it cuts the character's collar. I will fix this by, separate the neck layer of the body layer, and create a new layer above the arms named collar. I turned around again to check. The right upper arm part is already under the collar, but the right forearm right is wrong. I will drag the collar layer under the forearm right layer and right hand group. This time I'm in the right place. Moving on, I examine the leg bones. The left foot layer is currently under the hit layer, it doesn't look as good as the right foot layer. Therefore, I will move this hit layer below the left foot layer. When we move the hit layer down we will invert the fill and stroke of the thigh and hit. Turn on the fill and stroke of the hit layer. Hold down the ALT key and the down arrow to move this circle layer below the hit layer. Pick the circle color. Then turn off the fill and stroke of the left thigh. See our results. It's already more beautiful. Currently, our character is sliding down, because I haven't attached target bones to the two legs. Therefore, we will attach target bones to the two legs of the character, to help the character balance on the ground without sliding down. The target bone will not bind to any bones. When I finish drawing, I will drag down the affected area of these two bones. The target bone on the left is B33, and on the right is B34. Please pay attention. I click on the left calf bone, and go to bone constraints. Select down to the target section and find the name B33 of the left target bone to create a target for the left leg. 
You do the same with the right foot. After creating target for two bones left leg and right leg bone, when you move the main bone, the character goes up and down like this. You will see that our character no longer slides down, but currently the character's feet are still not balanced on a flat surface. Therefore, I will select the left and right foot bones, and click on the independent angle box, to keep these two foot bones balanced on the ground. One plane. When I pull up the character's whole body, the leg bones of the character have no elasticity, to give more elasticity to the character's legs. I selected two bones left thigh and thigh rig. Raising the IK to 2. At this point, when I pull up the character's body again, dot the character's legs already have a slight elasticity. If you want the character's legs to stretch out more, then let's increase your IK even more. To flip the right leg to the left like the left leg, I will create one more smart bone named leg right. Click the show label box to display the bone name. Click on bone constraints and check the angle constraints box to create the width of the bone. Here I make parameters about 30 degrees. You can create smaller or larger parameters, OK? You press Ctrl plus K to open the action panel and create action for leg right bone. Move the cursor to any position on the timeline bar. I put it at 24 frames. You can place it in any position. Drag the smart bone all the way to the rest of the range we did earlier to create the action. To rotate the right leg bone to the left in the simplest way, I will select a frame next to the last frame and flip the metatarsal to the right. Go to the foot group we created earlier, then right click and select the foot you want to change. Adjust the trouser leg to the same frame position as the foot bone frame. Watch me on how to do it. After completing the action, we double click on the main line to save the action we did before. I checked the smart bone again to see if there were any mistakes. I should put the leg layer above the body layer. That would be more correct. Next I created smart bones for the character's eyes. In the eyes section we have three groups. Group of eyebrows, group of expressions and group of irises. After checking, I create one pin bone and draw three bones equivalent to three groups in three different directions. Pull down the affected area of these bones. All three of these bones are connected to the pin bone. Select all these three bones and turn on angle constraints. My first index is 0 and the back index is 70. Now these smart bones will have the same rotation direction. I named this pin bone I left. Click here to turn on the name of this bone group. The top bone I chose is the smart bone of the character's eyebrow. In this eyebrow group there are three layers with three different eyebrow shapes. Click on this left corner to create a new action for the bone. 
I still choose frame 24 as the last frame, and I will divide the frames equally into three parts. Corresponding to my keying of three eyebrow actions, watch me doing it. With the expression group there are six layers equivalent to six different actions. Still doing the same thing. I divided it into six equal parts on the timeline bar and it ends at frame number 30. Dot the distance as big or small is up to you to decide. Change each layer in the frame position we split earlier. And save the action we just created. Same goes for this group of eyeballs as well. Three action bones we have done. Now we will check again. The smart bone group on the left eye is complete. Let's do the same with the smart bone group on the right eye. I will copy the action on the left eye and paste it into the action on the right eye. When you do many actions, copy and pass like that will be faster. The action bone group on the left and right eyes has been completed. I'll check it again. Why did I split the eyes into two separate actions like this? That's because I want to create a more diverse expression for the eyes. Dot the two eyes will work independently and not depending on each other. Next is making smart bones that change the character's mouth patterns. Create pin bone and two bones associated with pin bone. Name the pin bone mouth. Turn on the name of the bone. These two upper and lower bones we create a different degree for it. You can give any parameter or the upper bone parameter as larger and the lower bone parameter as smaller like me. With the above smart bone I will choose as switch layer smart bone to change the mouth styles. 
In the mouth group, there are six types of mouths. So I'll split it into six equal spacing. Remember to save the action. With the smart bone below, I will choose to make the small mouth scale bone for the character. After completing the action, dot you should check it again. We continue to create other groups of smart bones. In this group of bones I create smart bones. Head up, down, rotate left and rotate right for the character. I named this pin bone head turn. These smart bones bond with the pin bone and create the same degree for all bones. The top first bone. I choose to do the head up action for the character. I select these groups and drag them up at the same time. Then, adjust the face shape. Next, is the smart bone that makes the character move to the left. See how I do it. The character's ear layer is currently merging the left and right ears together into one layer. We will separate it into two layers. So that when the character's head rotates left, I will drag the right ear layer above the character's face layer. To save the action when we move the layers in a group, I will go to depth sort and turn on the enable animated layer order function. 
We continue to create action for the left rotation of the character. I turned off the edge of this ear hole. Continuing, I chose this bone as the smart bone for the character's bending down action.
The last bone. I chose to be the smart bone for the character's rotating right action. For this action I'm going to take the left head rotation and flip the head bone to the right. So I got the right head rotation. When turning left you see the character's neck is falling off. Dot and not following the head. So I will adjust the character's neck more. Much better than the old action. Now, I rechecked the action of turning the head to the right. In the action of turning the head to the right of the character's neck, it also needs to be corrected. I checked the smart bone again to see if there were any mistakes. This neck is not very good, so I will edit it a little more. Continue, I will edit the body, so that when the character bends down, it will look better. You choose the right parameters for the action of the bone. In this bone I will create two actions, bending forward and leaning back, so I will choose both parameters. I created the first action as to bend over. Dot you adjust the vector points of the layer so that it looks right. one bone you can create two actions. The same body bone I do the second action is to do the action of leaning back. I will add two small bones on both sides of the shirt, so that when the character bends or falls back, we will move the bones to make the hit part look better. We are done with the body part. Next is to do hand action for the character. I created the pin bone first and linked the other two bones to the pin bone. Remember to name the pin bone. And select both of these bones, then, make the interval you want for the two bones. To make the action move the hand layers up and down easier, I will put these two layers in the same group.
Same goes for the left hand. There are five different hand styles in the hand group. Create action for the smart bone of the hand. Dot and divide the distance into five equal parts corresponding to five different hand types. I do the same with the right hand. I copy the left hand action and paste it in the right hand. I chose the lower bone as the smart bone that records the movement of the hand layer above and below the character's body. To record layer moving action in the character, please click on the character's bone file, go to depth sort and check the box enable animated layer order. After that, start creating actions for the bones. I'm creating the bone on the left hand side. And this left arm group is under the body. So I'm going to drag this group above the body under the right hand layer. For the right hand. If I move this hand group below the character's body, you will see that the upper arm right will expose the stroke looks very ugly. So I'm going to create a patch to cover this stroke. Please open this group. I will cut the layer in this forearm by left clicking on this item and selecting patch. Then drag the newly created layer to the upper arm. and bind it to the upper arm bone, so that when the arm moves, the patch also follows. And next I will create action for this smart bone similar to the left one. This forearm right group is on top of the body layer, so I'll drag it below the body layer and place it above the left hand layer. Remember to save your actions and check the smart bones you have created. So we have completed the bones for the character in the three quarters angle, Next, we make the bones for the side character. Doing the same thing as the three quarters angle character, I drew the main bone and divided the bones in the character's body. Butt bones, body bones, head bones, and the bones of the hair tip. Center this layer and use the center selection tool to create bones for the upper arm. I'm centering the forearm part, similar to three quarters angle character.
remember to check the alignment of the bones. The upper arm right bone has not been linked. I will link it to the body bone. With the left arm I do the same as the right arm. The next step is to attach the bones to the legs. The way is similar to the three quarters angle. Follow me. Remember to pull all the affected area down. I bind the layers with the corresponding bones. Here I also created two small bones. The next steps to the same as three quarters angle.
I will add two points on the side of the neck. And bind the upper points attached to the skull. When moving the head bones the neck part follows the head. Dot but the neck part doesn't look so good. I will move this point a little higher and see what happens. Looks better now. Remember to check all the bones again. Here I should put the leg layer on top of the body. Pull this butt down. The thigh right circle has a small part of it resting on the cloth. So I'm going to pull the circle down to just touch the cloth. I will recolor and outline this circle, so that we can easily see and adjust the butt. I adjusted the butt to match the circle just now. After the adjustment was complete, I removed this circle. I try to rotate it once more after editing. The error is gone now. These hair tips I will turn on dynamic. These parameters you can adjust yourself accordingly. I tried the migration to see if it worked fine. Already perfect. The character's legs, I have not created a link, so when moving the character's legs do not follow. So I'm going to make a link for it, I'm linking these two bones to the character's butt bone. The next step. I create a target bone for the character, to keep the character standing on a flat surface, not sliding down. You click on the two newly created bones, to see the names of these two bones. I'm selecting the right calf bone, so I'll go to the target section and select the right target bone name. Left foot to the same as right foot. The foot is still sliding down, because, I have not turned on the independent angle for the foot. I selected these two foot bones and turned on independent angle. The two foot bones are now flat and no longer sliding downwards. The affected area of these two target bones is still there, so I pulled it all the way down. Select two thigh bones left and right and increase the IK parameter to stretch the bones for the character's legs. Copy the smart bones of the corner 3 part 4 character and paste it on the side corner character. Move the pin bone positions to where you want to place. Create a distance for the body bones and open the action panel. Then adjust the body point for the character.
The calf and hand parts one will put together in a group to easily move this hand layer above and below the character's body. Name the group you just created. Do the same with the lower hand group. Currently these action bones do not have action recorded. So I'm going to select the smart bone of the corner three quarters to copy the action of that bone. And paste it on the bone of the side corner. For the scale bones, I will do the action directly for the side character, or you can copy the action scale of the three quarters and paste it on the side. Drag the three quarters character to the right to easily see the side character. Continue to perform the action copy the actions done in the three quarters angle character and paste it into the action of the side smart bone. I check these bones one more time. I created more smart bones that rotate the head. Reverse the position of the bones of the head. Neck area I will readjust. Scale the body bones and head bones to create the elasticity of the body. In the last frame return the head and body bones to their original size. When the character rotates his head, I have the character close and open his eyes to look more natural. Please select the step function to avoid frame drift when changing eye type. And remember to save the action you did. I forgot to rotate the smart bone when creating action, 
So you will see no action taking place when you rotate it. I will go back to the action panel and rotate this smart bone. Dot and save the action just done. For the side hand bones group, I will copy the action of the three quarters hand bones. them on the side hand bones. Remember to turn this on, to save the action when you move layers in the character. I will create a patch, to cover the stroke of this upper arm, while moving the right arm layer below the body layer. Now, I will check the character one more time. The last corner, is the behind of 3 quarters angle character you do the same as the front 3 quarters and the side angle I made.
finished setting the bones for my three angle character. I hope my sharing will help your work. I wish you success. See you in the next clips.